Church Pastor Adam here with just a couple announcements before we start into the Bible study. First off, if you haven't gotten an email or if you haven't seen us on, on uh, seen the the announcement on Facebook yet, we are going to be doing a parking lot service this Sunday for Mother's Day. The service starts at 10 a.m. and um, all are welcome. We do ask though for the safety of the of the public of the community and those that are volunteering. Um, that if you are showing symptoms or you know someone that uh, else that is showing symptoms or has been diagnosed with COVID-19, to please just stay home safe and watch this service live on Facebook or YouTube. We're still going to be putting it out um, for everyone to see, so no worries. You don't have to worry about it. But um, if you're feeling healthy and you want to come see your family, come on up to LHCC this Sunday at 10 a.m., okay? I have one more announcement real quick, and that is about the food bank. So Foley sent me a message. <laughs> 10 a.m. So Foley sent me a message, and I actually just showed this to Pastor, but something very amazing. And I guess he's crunched up the numbers, and it says that in April... The LHCC fed 413 families, and when you break it down, that comes down to 2,073 people that you fed for the month of April. Again, like I said on Sunday, I want to say thank you so much to all the volunteers that make that possible, and especially you, the church givers that are able to allow us to fund something like that. It is such an amazing thing that, you know, we're not a big church. We're not huge, especially compared to some other ones in the area. And uh, we're able to do an outreach like that for our community. So that brings me up to one more thing, and that is if you are in need, then let us know. You can always come to our food bank in, in, uh, every Friday starting at 12 p.m. And you can also go to our website at lhccr.com and request prayer directly there. You'll actually get a hold of me, and I'll pray for you directly, okay? Thank you guys so much, and enjoy the service. Thank you. 
Good evening. Welcome. Uh, this evening, as we go come back to Wednesday night service, as we study the book of James, as we begin to look at the things that he wanted to share with us so that we can be inspired, that we can be filled with the power of God to realize the blessings that he has for us, to be informed and inspired and equipped so that we can engage in today's culture and the things that he wanted us to realize as he did the book of James. So James tells us, and again, we want to welcome all of you from Lake Hills Christian Center, and uh, we welcome you today. Just a blessing that we could come together in fellowship and just kind of kick back a little bit and just asking God for uh, guidance as, as we just have this midweek service in the name of Jesus. If you have a Bible, turn with me to the book of James. And it's a blessing. And he begins by saying, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. James meaning he whom God protects. He whom God protects. It comes and derives from the word Jacob or Jacob during that time frame could be used as Jacob as well. It's a long terminology of Jacob. And James tells us that he's a servant, a douloid, a bondservant of the Lord. One that wants to bless the Lord at any cost. And he tells us that he's enriched. So he was a free man and not a hired servant and not a slave. But yet, willfully and hilariously, he wanted to serve the Lord. So he says, James, a servant of God, and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to whom the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings, shalom, his salutation to the, to the twelve tribes. The encouragement of rejoicing, of finding the truth in the time that is so difficult. And for us to try to find that time of serenity, a blessing in a time that is so difficult for us right now, what we're going through. Trials are trials, through tribulations, through the things that we go through. And obviously, we are going through some horrendous things ourselves. But when we look at the positive side, it gives us an opportunity to sit with our children, our family members, to share, to pray together, to look at the Word of God together, to ask questions, to go back. And, and make fun of ourselves and, and do things together as a family like in the olden days. In the old days they would have a skit, comedy, and it was a time for the family to get together and just have a good time. And that's the way it is for us today if we look at it and get the positive side and don't look at it in the negative side and just say, Lord God, I know that all this is going to pass sooner or later. But it gives me the opportunity of seeing and being with my children and helping me to see them more and understand and have more and more one-on-one uh, -on -one together. So he tells us that to the 12 tribes that are scattered, the salutation, the encouragement, to rejoice, irregardless. Then he says in verse 2, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfected and complete and lacking in nothing. He brings us to the point of the trial that's a, a point of purification for each person that comes to that test, of trying to find a way to the maze of life, knowing that we boast on the trials of God of the endurance of the Lord God in our life. That is the blessing, knowing that the testing will bring something out sooner or later. It's going to help to perfect us as we face the tribulations 
and the problems that are there for each and every one of us that may be different, the storms of life, as some say today as well. And it's a time for us to realize and be blessed. But he said, be complete, lacking in nothing. The process has to take place in order for us to feel the fulfillment of God that goes on in us. It's a goal of a purification so it can bring out maturity in our lives so that we can understand what we're going through. We grow. God takes us and places us in a different level so that we understand the blessings of God into maturity. And if anyone lacks wisdom, verse 5, let him ask of God who gives with all generosity, notice, and the blessings without reproach, and it will be given to him. If we ask, we shall receive the blessings of the Lord, that God will give us the faith, that we will be sound, that we will be strong, and we can ask as he gives us the blessings. We find that purpose in our life and through the trials that we're going through the problems that exist, the things that we face. King David writes that the law of the Lord was perfected in restoring the soul of the man, of the things that we encounter, the things that we experience, the changes in our life, in the journey that we're on as we mature through our relationships with our children, in our homes, in our families, even in our jobs and the things that we we experience. So at times we wonder, all of us have had a time of wondering, what is God up to in my life? I know that I'm going through seasons and some of the seasons seem as though I can't handle them. Some of the seasons seem as though I want to give up. I don't know how to deal with this. Yet for so many heartaches and difficulties in our life, it's not a time to give up, but it's a time to ask God. As he says it, he will bless us with generosity and help us to overcome the wiles of the enemy, those temptations to help us to grow. God could step in at any given time, if he feels like stepping in, to change our circumstances, if that was the case. God can change anything that affects our lives. But it, he allows things to happen at times. Often these changes of circumstances is not what we need. We want to just get away from it. The pressure is too hard. I don't know how to deal with it exactly. I've never experienced anything like this in my life. Is there something wrong? Have I sinned against you? And we begin to ask these questions. Yet, just taking it away is not always going to help us in the things that we need. We need to understand. And what we need is the real wisdom and the discernment of God to be able to face the challenges and the heartaches of life. That that is a part of our nature. That is a part of life. That's a part of what we live in an environment that has fallen. And we understand that we have to face these difficulties in the world and there's no way out of them. These are things that are challenging to us at times. And we wonder, what am, I, what am I going to do, Lord God? How am I going to overcome this? And we must stay on course no matter what. Staying on course, helping our family members, giving advice to others that are, that are struggling. Because you're not alone. You're not the only one that's struggling. We all struggle. We all come to, place, to a place in our life where we temptation, the struggles of life, and the fear, and the trauma that, that hits us, not knowing what tomorrow holds. How am I going to deal with tomorrow? The crisis. Again, for you that have been laid off, and you're going through a time in your life right now being laid off, not knowing what's going to happen. How are you going to pay your rent, your business, and all these things? God is aware of all that. God knows what you're going through. He's going to bless you. He's going to uplift you. He's going to strengthen you, and He's going to encourage you. So we must go through this course when life becomes difficult and say, you know what, no matter what, I'm going to stand on the faith of God. I'm going to stand with the Lord no matter what. Because God desires that we would have the wisdom 
the discernment, the understanding. And yet far too many people in a time like that go back into the world. They go back into drugs. They go back into drinking. They go back into other things that are not of God because of weaknesses. Yet we should stand strong before the Lord, even though it's a rough road ahead of us and there's a lot of speed bumps, but yet God is in control. And I have to be assured of that, and I have to know that with God, all things are possible. With the Lord, all things are possible, and I know I'm going to come out victorious. And sometimes, because of our weaknesses, we seek a way of trying to get through this trial faster, easier. Somehow, how can I make it go away faster and easier so I can just go ahead and do what I want to do? Get on with my life. I want to feel the blessings again. I want to know that I could do this and I want to know that I could do that. For us, it's been just as challenging knowing that we can't have services in our church yet, seeing people that are struggling, the phone calls that we get. But yet it's been a blessing because we've been able to reach so many people through these trials and tribulations that we probably would have never even imagined that we could reach. God has opened the doors for us that we're able to reach people in India and people around the world. I have a friend, Julius, in India, and we're able to reach out to people that we would never think that we could. Because even though it's a trial and a tribulation, God is using it. God is blessing it. And that is the blessing, even though the road is rough, and we wonder how we're going to make it for the church. How do we exist? How do we continue? That's why we seek an easier way out. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to go away faster. Yet I've got to look at the challenges that are difficult for all of us. And yet understand what James says, that these trials are there to make us strong. And no one likes trials. None of us wants to boast. In 2 Corinthians, Paul the Apostle said, he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. My strength, God says, is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities and my problems that the power of Christ may rest upon me, that I may be a blessing to the Lord that I may understand what he's taking me through, that I have the faith in the insurance, in the assurance of God that he's going to bless me, he's going to make a way. And sometimes we are in that comfort zone where we want to operate in that comfort zone and I want to be able to call it. I want to be able to do what I want to do. I want to rely on my own strength instead of the strength of God, instead of the blessings of the Lord. I want to rely on my own strength when trouble comes, God wants us to learn. He wants us to understand how to seek Him. And not my strength, not my power, not my money, not my friends or my spouse. But to seek Him. To tell Him, Lord God, I come before you in the name of Jesus. I want to rely on you. I want to rely on your wisdom. I want to read, I want to pray, I want to seek you, I want to learn, I want to grow. I don't just want to ask for someone to help me come out of this so it's an easier way and then say maybe God was in it. No, God is always there and he wants to take us through that time. And someone may ask for wisdom that really needs it and they ask only in times of difficulties. But yet we should always be asking God for wisdom, for discernment, for intimacy. Asking Him to bless you no matter what. And He'll never fail you. He'll always want you to be blessed. God's wisdom for us is something essential that we need in order to walk this course of life that we're on. These trials are daily. Whatever it is, finances, jobs, children, relationships... There are trials that we go through. No one lives a perfect life. If that was the case, people with money would never commit suicide. People with money 
would you would say that's the way, that's the answer of life, that's the antidote for life. It is not. As we have seen so many that become drug addicts, commit suicide, they struggle with life itself, and they have enough money to live three, four lifetimes. But they don't know how to maintain because they need Jesus. They need the power of God, just like we do. We need to ask God for that wisdom. We need to ask God, not only when I'm going through trials and temptations. No, I need to ask God, because I know He won't fail me. I need to gain God's wisdom in my life. Even at times that are blessing, I know that things are going so beautiful. That is a time to bask in the presence of God. That is a time to just say, Lord God, fill me with your power. Let me feel your goodness and not drift away from the blessings of God. But truly, it's a time to just say, Lord, I want to bask in your presence. I want to enjoy this time. I want to grow. I want to find maturity because I want to bless you, Lord God. It is a walk that's intimate between you and God. It's a relationship of knowing him. Standing strong, standing firm, no matter what tidal waves, what hurricanes come into your life, you are standing for the glory of Jesus Christ and not giving up. That's the man, that's the woman that has a heart after God. That's the person that's going to wither the storms of life. That's the person that's going to have the victory because God is going to be there and bless us. Our devotion to Him. And how we spend that time of, of looking and devoting our time. And, and also, if I'm not careful, I'll miss out on those blessings. I'll miss out on the best things that God wants to give me. Because I'm concentrating on myself and not on God. I'm concentrating on how am I going to work this out? How can I stay in my comfort zone and work this all out? That I can boast how good it is. God says, I want to strip you from everything so I can build you up so that you will know it is I that is with you, that you will know that I'm the one blessing you, that you won't miss anything, that God is going to bless you. He's going to give you his best. That's a blessing when he will open the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings out of heaven of just Certain things that you need. And God knows what you need. It may not be finances. Maybe it's health. Maybe it's a new, a, a new job. A new career. That God wants to build you up. And help you. It's a relationship. When we say we want to be born again. There's a lot that goes into that. Otherwise we're just people that go to church. We, we're just church members. If I don't have that relationship with God, I'm just a church member. I'm not growing. I'm not maturing. I'm not understanding Him. I'm not fellowshipping with Him. I'm trying to make people happy. But not God. I need to learn how to make Him happy. When I walk the walk that He's called me to walk. And finding that purpose that you hear me talk so much about. Because I see people that are just church members. People that just go to church and say, well, I'll pacify myself and I'll go to church because I know that's the right thing to do. And when I do that, I pray that God's going to bless me, that God's going to open the doors and He's going to do things for me. God desires that we would walk, that we would be involved, that we would be that person that He's called us to be, for His glory, even when you don't feel like it. Those are trials that are difficult. Those are trials that purge out those things that are hurting us, those things that we need to begin our life with prayer in the morning. Begin to pray and seek the Lord. Begin to ask Him. Begin to devote that time and say, Lord God, my devotion to You is to acknowledge who You are. To have that time that is such a blessing, Lord God, as you prepare me for today, for the things that I'm going to experience, the things that I'm going to encounter, Lord God, that you give me the strength 
so I can learn how to walk with you as I devote my life to you so that we can avoid the trials that sometimes come. I understand that trial. I understand what's coming, but I can rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I can come against it in the name of Jesus because he's there and I know that I'm walking according to his will. And yet the Bible says, as James tells us, and it, it's difficult, count it all joy when you fall into various trials and tribulations. Count it all joy because you're being matured, because you're growing. Count it all joy when you're going through a hardship, when the devil's coming against you and our lives are, are struggling. Yet God says, this is for us. And it may sound preposterous, I understand all that. But yet God is in control through the trials and for the joy that he gives us. It's bittersweet sometimes, but the Lord is with us. And that's a part of growth that we don't understand. The utterance of God, the blessing, the assurance, the richness that he gives us. Even though we feel like, my God, I'm going through the desert and I'm all alone. And you may feel as though God is forsaking you, but he has not forsaken you. He loves you. He died for you. He died that you would have freedom and have life everlasting. He died that you would be able to grow and be blessed through the trials of life. Life is a trial. The day that you came out of your mother's womb and you begin to breathe on your own, you begin to live so you face the trials of life. That's a part of what life is all about, trials. Growing up, it's trials of learning how to become mature. No one grows up and says, I have everything I want, I have everything I need, and that's all that matters. No. These are the trials that we learn how to walk, how to deal with, how to be able to be mature, how to ask God for his blessings because I go through these trials that are difficult. And I realize and understand the trials that make you who you are, the joy that coming together, the blessing of knowing the Lord, to get together to understand and walk. Yet we see trials as a process. It's a process. It's a spiritual endurance. It's a spiritual muscle that we exercise through these trials of growth, of stability. It's an assurance of maturity that's going to come out. I've been there, done that, you can say. I understand what that's all about. It's not the easiest thing to go through. But you're able to counsel. You're able to tell someone. I know what you're going through, and it's not an easy thing, but let me give you the assurance. I've been there. I've done that. And God has been so good. That's why James tells us, my brothers, count it all joy, verse 2, when you fall into various trials, knowing, verse 3, that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, character, as we face these trials. Verse 4, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfected and complete, and yet lacking in nothing, the Bible's telling us. Lacking in nothing that I understand. The development, the process, as a child that learns to crawl. And before you know it, they learn to walk, and they learn to run. That's a part of the process that we're going through, learning how to crawl through the trials of belief, to develop faith, to develop stability, that when I grow, I can understand my faith is assured in the Lord. I'm strong, I'm solid in my faith, no matter what, I'm not giving up when I go through the trials, because I see what James is saying here, that perseverance, that development that's taking place in my life to help me against the tidal waves of this world, against the problems that come against me, that I understand the assurance and the maturity in my life. And James says, even though you're lacking, ask God for wisdom. Ask Him and watch Him bless you. 
Watch him uplift you. Watch him give you what you need. And it'll be given to you when you ask the Lord. God desire for us as we learn how to walk our walk before God. God cannot give you everything unless you know who he is. Unless you appreciate what he's done. Unless you realize what it costs him to bring us into the sheepfold. Unless you realize what God is trying to show you. It's like the disciples. When they came to the Lord, they had to be disciples in order to become apostles. We have to be discipled by the power of the Holy Spirit. And as we're discipled by the power of the Holy Spirit, I have the assurance, the endurance to walk with faith and strength. And it'll give me power over sin. And for us, we're able to count it all joy and say, hey, I've been there, done that, but I know that God is with me. The apostles were able to count it all joy when they seen what was going on. After they realized the assurance of God, after they were able to separate the fear and the unbelief and be able to see the strength and the faith that God was giving them that they could stand strong and count it all joy as they faced the trials of life. Remember, before that, they were hiding. They were afraid to express their beliefs. They were in their homes hiding from the authorities, afraid what was going to happen. But once they found the blessings of God, and once they had the assurance of the Lord, and they took them, they were bold. They were, they were on fire for the Lord and going out and telling everyone about Jesus. They weren't afraid any longer. They didn't care if they were incarcerated. They didn't care if they were beaten anymore. They didn't care about their lives because they had the assurance of Jesus Christ in their life. Their faith had soared and they understood as they soared the blessing that God was giving them and the strength. Our faith has to soar so that we can be strong in the things that God desires and that I can see these things in a different way. Not as things that are going to bring me down. But I get God's perspective in my life. I begin to see. Yet sometimes trials make us wonder. That's part of growth. As you're going and finding maturity through the maze of life. You're looking for growth and stability. And you begin to wonder. And what and how do I make the decisions that I have to make? Are my decisions going to bring blessings before the Lord? Or are my decisions going to be weak? Am I going to stand strong for the glory of God? Or my decisions, are they going to make me look weak? Are they going to make me run away because I think it's easier? It's all about our decisions and how we face these trials and tribulations. My decisions that I have to make before God. Obviously, God is looking to see what we're going to do and how we're going to handle the adversity in our lives. And sometimes we go to others. Can you help me? Can you give me advice? I'm going through this trial that's so hard. And some people will mock some people will make fun of you. Some people will try to distract you because the devil never sleeps. He's trying to take you away from the glory of God. Don't believe all that, they'll tell you. You really believe all that? The world does not know the Lord. You've got to settle that in your heart first and foremost. The world does not understand trials. The world handles it a different way. Open a can of booze or a bottle or take a joint or get drugs, whatever. They handle it a different way when they call it pressure. 
I don't know how to deal with this. As a believer, we take a drink of Jesus. We come before the Lord. I don't want to be distracted by the world because I understand where they stand. I understand how they believe. And I know that they can think I'm crazy. That's all right. Like I used to tell the guys at work, I'm a fool for Jesus, but whose fool are you? Who's pulling your strings? I'm not afraid to say that I love the Lord. And so we must walk because we live in a fallen world. And all the things that are around us make it difficult for us to understand. That's why there's earthquakes, floods, diseases in the world. And some of those things stretch us. And yet they cannot be prevented. Just like the trials at life. Just like the apostles experienced. Just like the prophets experienced the trials of life. And yet they walk with God. Look at King David. His whole life was summed up by trials. Whether it was Saul or the Philistines or whoever... But he always was fighting the battle. He knew that for him to walk with God was going to cause him to let go and let God. And I love what the Lord told him after all that he had done. Because he was not a perfect man, but looking to walk through his life and knowing what God could do for him. And God tells him, you're a man after my own heart. You're a man after my own heart, David. What a blessing. And yet he could have given up at any given time and said, this isn't of God. Why do I want to be king? When the trials of life are so hard. I hurt. I'm being mocked. I'm being ridiculed. They're after me to take my life. And I'm supposed to say that I'm happy. I know that it's difficult, but this is why we need the wisdom of God. We need the faith of God. We need the power of God. And the more you do nothing about it, the more the devil's going to use it against you. And the colder you get. That's why it's important that we launch out. And say, I want to do what God has called me to do. I really want to serve the Lord. That's number one in my life. I want to serve the Lord. I want to fall in love with Jesus. I want to fall in love with Him. I want to give Him adoration. I want to bless Him. I want to be encouraged. I want to be blessed. I need the wisdom that will enable me to see through the maze of life that will enable me to see through the fog and the mist, the clarity and the power and the wisdom and the source of the trial. Why am I going through that trial? What does that trial have to do with me? That I could say I count it all joy because of the blessings of God, the quality and the experience of knowing the Lord God. And yet knowing the judgment and having the freedom and yet being able to learn, learn how to surrender, how to surrender my life to him, how to yield, how to give that brings maturity as I see the problems because I know my life is in his hands. And I know that he controls every breath that I take. And I know that God is with me. The action, the decisions that God wants to help us to make. The appreciation for the Lord God. The experience that we experience and the knowledge that God wants to give you. God never says oops to you. God never called you to his kingdom so you would hurt, so that you would feel bitter, so you would feel as though he doesn't care. God never called you for that. 
We are to be prepared and uplifted for the glory of God so that we can handle any situation, any issue, and count it all joy because God is with us. James tells us to count it all joy. And if we lack wisdom in verse 5, let him or her ask. And God who gives with liberty, gives you with generosity, without reproach, without nothing, just ask and it will be given to him. So whatever we lack, I have to come back and I have to ask God. And sometimes God allows trials in our life and on this road that we're on in order to test our faith, to test and see what I'm made out of. Am I going to run? Am I going to go back into the world to that trial? Am I going to stand strong for the glory of God? Am I going to touch others? Or am I going to run in fear, upset, the trials are to test your faith to walk and be strong so it produces the endurance and the patience and the maturity within your life as a believer. Remember, that's not a pew warmer. That's the person that's in the battlefield. That's the person that is fighting the war. That's the person that's on ground zero fighting for what they believe in, standing firm, irregardless of what anyone says. You're ready to move and finding the assurance and the testing that goes through your life so you can say, Lord, I want to be proven. I want to do your will, Lord God. I want to serve you. So if God is testing you in order to produce your faith, in order that you may learn to love Him, in order to prove your strength before the Lord, that I'm strong, I'm steadfast, and I love the Lord God. Strengthen us with your power, Lord God, so that we can face the trials of life, that we can understand our walk with you, the trials that will disappear sooner or later. But still I can endure. As the trials purify me. As the trials purify our lives. And it builds muscle. And it builds character. And it builds strength within us. That we can fight the good fight for the glory of God. That we're warriors for the kingdom of God. And ready to move forward as we're being purified for the, the kingdom of God. Be careful with bad habits. Bad habits have a way of stopping the process. Bad habits have a way of hiding us from the truth of God because it's sin. Areas that are neglected sooner or later come up as sin in our life. That's why we must come before the Lord. And as we face the trials of life, everything becomes a part of God and everything surface. And we're able to see my weaknesses and my strength. I can learn and I can know myself. As everything surfaces to the top, I know what's wrong. I know where I'm lacking. I know where I'm strong and I know where I'm weak because I can deal with these things so that I can be mature for the Lord God. And we can say, I count it all joy that I can find my way through this life asking and blessing the blessings of God. Trials give God an opportunity to demonstrate to you and to me his sustaining power, 
the power and love that I can hang on to, that I can hold him, I can love him. Even though there's tough times, I can hang on and tell him how much I love him, how much I surrender. It's amazing, but it's a testimony. It's a testimony to you first and then to the world. Unbelievers don't understand that. But we as believers know and we witness to the difficulties of where God has taken us. The testing of growth and stability. The peace that the Holy Spirit will give you. The peace and the joy that the Holy Spirit can touch and bless you. And trials will produce a Christ-like character in your life that people can say, look what a joy, what a blessing that God is doing. So allow God, allow God to bless you through these trials and be fully equipped. And yet trials require total surrender. Understand me, total surrender to the will of God. And there, through those trials and total surrender, you will meet Him. And there He will bless you. And there He will equip you for the service ahead of you. And there you will feel blessed and not being a couch potato and not surrendering or not saying, I can't do it. But you will surmount the blessings of God through the trials and you will understand the Holy Spirit in your life like never before. Allow God to touch you. Don't listen to the devil. God wants to put your life together piece by piece. Because when we come to God, we are broken vessels and pieces as we come to God. And in the process of knowing the Lord, He begins to mold us. He begins to shape us. And he begins to put this puzzle together because we're fragile. We're very fragile. But God begins to put us together. And that's the blessing of knowing the Lord. Because through the process, you're seeing the hand of God in your life. As we give God the glory. As we reveal to the world what God is doing in our life. I pray for God's blessing, I pray for God's joy in your life, that we would be a broken vessel together so that you can experience the power of God like you've never before and lack nothing in the glory of God. Let God begin to touch you. Let God be the source of your strength as God will uplift you and God will bless you. It's a blessing as we go to the book of James to see the challenges that he wants us to understand. Be filled with the power of God. Be motivated for the glory of God. What a blessing it is to serve the Lord together. Tell him to fill you with his power. Tell him to fill you from head to toe with his power. And you will feel the glory of the Lord. Fill us, Lord, with your power. Fill us with your love. And fill us with your glory. Lord God, we love you. And we worship you, Lord God. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. And take control of our lives, Father God. To this season, to these trials to this fear that we're going through, through life that is very complex, help us to come and endure and be strong. I love you in the Lord. I pray for God's blessing, endurance and strength and courage in a time like this. I pray for God to bless you from head to toe. And again, I pray for your families, for your loved ones, for whatever you're going through, give it to Jesus to that trial so that you can say, I want to count it all joy because of what he's doing in my life and just give him glory. 
and ask him to fill you with his power, with his love, and surrender and submit to the Lord. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you and the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Remember, we have a service on Sunday. We invite you to come out. It'll be a parking lot service, but it'll be a blessing for Mother's Day that we can come out together and love the Lord. I love you and I pray for God's strength and power in your life. Be at peace. Understand right now, take this opportunity of this time to be with your families, with your children. Talk to them. Express your love. Express your strength. And help them in a time like this. And you will be blessed. May God touch you and bless you. May God bless America. May God watch over us. And bless the nation of Israel. I love you, the Lord. God bless you.